Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Oh boy, here we go again. Another unnecessary sequel, remake, reboot, or whatever the fuck they keep calling it nowadays, of a classic comedy that I grew up with. Out of all the comedies, action movies, and all the others that I grew up with, why on earth did they have to keep ruining a classic movie such as National Lampoon's Vacation? I know. What the fuck? It's bad enough we've been getting so many fucking rip-offs of the film, such as Johnson Family Vacation and RV, but yet they have to make another unnecessary sequel to one of the best films of all time? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, the movie that became a franchise? About what was it like when you have a family named the Griswolds, who goes on a long cross-country trip all the way from Atlanta to California just so they can go to Wally World, the biggest theme park of all time, so they can have fun, you know, going on the roller coasters and all these other rides. I mean, that's exactly what the film's all about. You know, a cross-country road that's gone wrong. I'm sorry, but you just can't remake this, you can't reboot it, and you definitely can't ruin a perfectly good film like this. Okay, and I swear to God, that's why John Hughes and Harold Ramis, God rest his souls, are completely rolling in their graves by now. It's just really sad that they're really treating these, uh, these brilliant writers and directors like them they have no respect for them whatsoever for this fucking piece of shit sequel that didn't need to be made I mean maybe they wanted to come up with something different this time around I can understand that but why are they trying to borrow elements from the fucking original film I, I just don't fucking understand you just can't do it. You can't do it at all. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm well. Here goes. The movie, of course, is called Vacation. An unnecessary sequel to the original 1983 film that we all grew up in love. It stars Ed Helms from The Hangover, Christina Applegate. From Mirable Children, Skylar DeSanto, Steel Stebbins, Chris Hemsworth, who's been best known as playing Four, and I know he went on to do films like The Avengers, you know, where he played Four, and all these other movies that he's been in. Leslie Mann, of course, who's been in several uh, Judd Apatow movies and all that. Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo, both of which were in the original. Uh, vacation. Yes, yeah, so they, they replies their roles once again as Clark Griswold and Ellen Griswold. Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He was also in Horrible Bosses. Catherine Massell. Ron Livingston from Office Space. Norman Reedus. Keegan-Michael Key. Regina Hall from the Scary Movie Movies. Elizabeth Gillis. Tim Heidecker from Tim and Eric's uh, awesome show. Nick Kroll, Caitlin Olson, Michael Pina from Fury and Ant Man, and Hannah Davis from, you know, who's a Sports Illustrated model who was once up in those shitty direct TV commercials. It's written and directed by Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, you know, the two. Writers and directors of Horrible Bosses and the incredible Burt Wonderstone. The movie begins focus on the older son of the Griswolds named Rusty, who's played by Ed Helms, who now works as a pilot for an airline company called Echno Air. Yeah, this was a scene where yeah, he, he wants to become a pilot, um, working with a co-pilot who's old. He's actually telling them 
I want to thank you for all this and that and all of this other crap. Then he wants to check and see if everybody's okay. And you know, since they're on a an 18 minute flight, you know they already meet um, a family couple, which suddenly, you know, trying to tell them about about becoming a pilot someday. Yeah, because you have a little kids telling them that. Then suddenly we started getting the turbulence that started to happen three times. You know, once of landing on the couple, and, and yeah, even the father tells them, um, "Can you please stop fucking touching us?" and that sort of thing. Even worse, when they finally landed, uh, his rival, an, air, an airline pilot named Ethan, who's played by Ron Livingston, had once have taken over his shuttle. So then he had to wait for the next one, which is only 25 minutes. But then when he finally arrived, we soon meet his wife. Debbie, who's played by Christina Applegate, who actually shares a very strange relationship with each other, along with their two sons, a shy and anxious older son named James, who's played by Skylar Gisanto, and a very cruel and mean-spirited younger son named Kevin, who wants a bullying James all the time, even calling him that he has a vagina and all that shit, who's played by Steel Stebbins. So during that day, we begin to focus on his friends of a family named Jack and Nancy, who are both played by Keegan Michael Key and Regina Hall, that they wound up going on on a vacation in Paris. They started showing a lot of pictures on their Instagram page. And yeah, even Nancy forces uh, Debbie to actually hit the like button on every single picture. <sighs> Unbelievable. Another reason not to join Instagram. Well, I haven't joined Instagram, so what would I care? Oh, well, anyway, already feeling very down about this. Um, Rusty decided to nix his family's annual trip to the cabin in Shamokagan, Michigan, and drive cross country to Wally World. Yeah, the theme park that we actually remember the most in the original film. Yeah. Which, of course, he had years before his parents and his sister, Audrey Griswold, who's now played by Leslie Mann. Yeah, who now is marrying to Stone Quandall, who's played by Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, who's the, uh, the up-and-coming anchorman, you know, as we know it. Anyway, so along the way, they decided to go on a blue Albanian car, which is basically... An electric and gas car, yeah, because you have two uh, electrical wires, both on the left side and the back, plus two gas tanks. Um, they have pretty much a lot of buttons that you can control, and, and of course, it even has a GPS with many language selections. Yeah, and I know there was a scene where they tried to switch to all these other other buttons, and they, they accidentally switched the language section to... Korean, and this is where we get to hear an angry Korean yelling at all their the location stops that they're going to. I mean, that, that that is just so fucking stupid. It's not even funny. I I, I don't understand why they keep do, doing this to movies like this. Anyway, they started making many stops, but first they made it into Memphis, where they actually went up to um, to Debbie's uh, old college that she used to go to. Where they wound up doing a, uh, get this, a, a, uh, a contest where they actually go around chugging the entire pitcher of beer and go on to an obstacle course just to raise money for, get this, an awareness for Asperger's Syndrome. Unbelievable. Because this is where we get to meet free dumb bimbos who wants up, you know, raising money already, and actually force Debbie to actually uh, go up on onto the obstacle course to do this because, because she she was of course known as the legend. Simply, Debbie does everything. Oh great! So this is like Debbie does Dallas or something. Stupid. Well, that didn't seem to work out because unfortunately, when that happened, you know, she started vomiting while trying to. Trying to make it all the way to the obstacle course, and yeah, that was terrible. Then they wound up staying at a motel that's sort of similar to the one that they saw in the original film, where James meets 
Adina, who's played by Catherine Massot, a girl at his age that he saw while driving on the highway, has already been scared away by Rusty by trying to entice her towards him in a very quick, be awkward way. Yeah. Yeah, James first saw her before Kevin decided to put a bag over his head and choking him to death. <sighs> Completely embarrassing. Then the next shot, they went to Arkansas where they wound up going inside a hot springs. But then they realized that it turned out to be a raw sewage dump. And then all of a sudden, all their stuff is being stolen. And they even draw in a picture of a penis on the car. <sighs> yeah, so that means that you're going to have the Griswolds actually be covered with feces all the way around their face. Pretending like it was mud. Ugh. So then, after that, they decided to go all the way to Texas, you know, just to receive assistance from Rusty's sister, Audrey, and her husband, Stone Crandall. So they began to suspect tensions of his relationship with Debbie due to you know, Stone's uh, awkward sexual behavior and actions. Yeah, this is the scene where, once they started staying over at the place, uh, Rusty and Stone were actually, you know, driving around on all these, uh, all these motorcycles. They, they started driving around where all the cows and, and steers are. Then all of a sudden, Rusty actually ran over a cow, and then yet he's covered in blood. Oh, not funny. At all. Oh, that's just disgusting. Anyway, after that, um... They started spending the following night at an Arizona campsite where they went to a motel. Yeah, the ones with the Indian tippies. Yeah, and I know I've seen that before. Um, anyway, Rusty and Debbie decided to go off on an successful attempt at, by having sex. Where suddenly they were at the four corners where we saw, you know, four cops going after them. But they're just going around arguing with each other and... And they're just fighting and doing all this other stupid shit. And already tr almost trying to arrest Rusty and Debbie. Oh my god. It, it was not funny. While James had finally met Adina once again. And suddenly you know, he decided to give an advice to, to James to finally you know, go after his brother. <laughs> and they did. So anyway, the next morning... Almost getting nearly killed by a suicidal rafting guide who's played by Charlie Day in the Grand Canyons and going to a water rafting. Suddenly the car had run out of gas in the middle of the desert and explodes, leading to one miserable trip after another and, and they walk alone. That now already we get to meet a, uh, a truck driver who's been chasing them around throughout the entire uh, trip. Yeah, the one that has the, a big rig that has a, a teddy bear on it. It turns out that this supposedly maniac truck driver, who's played by Norman Reedus, has decided to uh, return the missing wedding ring that Debbie had and, and all his other stuff. And actually gives them a lift to San Francisco where they spend the night at a bed and breakfast um, run. Yeah, which is now being run by by Clark and Ellen, you know, both played by Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. So their attempts to fly home to Chicago the next day, where Rusty and Debbie confront each other about their writing marriage and all this, and decide to start all over again. So with that aside, Rusty finally had a had a chance to finally take the family all the way to Wally World, which they've been trying to go all along. So they wound up riding inside the classic Wagon Queen family truckster all the way to to Wally World. So they finally get to ride the Velociraptor, yeah, one of the newest roller coaster rides that they had at Wally World. Yeah, but of course they had to spend the entire day waiting in line until they finally made it. Yeah, you know, hours later. So all of a sudden he bumps into, you guessed it, 
Ethan, who wants a cunning in line using the Wally Pass, along with his family, so they can go on the ride. And it leads to a, a huge fight. So they beat the shit out of everybody in order to get to the ride. And once they finally made it, they wound up getting stuck in, into the, the Velociraptor ride. So they had to wait all night until they finally already being rescued for several hours. And then after the following day, the family had brought closer to each other. So now Rusty had winds up spending alone with Debbie on a relaxing vacation to Paris. You know what? I'm definitely going to sum this up already by using the song Holiday Road. By going like this. This movie sucks. This movie sucks. Why did I waste the 99 pressures on my life? Oh. By seeing unnecessary stupid jokes. Oh. This movie sucks. The movie sucks. Why do we have the younger son who starts acting like a dick? Oh. Why do we have a son who acts like a fucking wimp? Oh. This movie sucks. This movie sucks. Why are they trying to insult my intelligence? Oh, by ruining all the classic elements from the original. Oh, this movie sucks. This movie sucks. Why did Christina Applegate have to waste her talent? Oh, why did Ed Helms have to be casted in it? Oh, this movie sucks. This movie sucks. Why this movie had to be so mean spirited? Oh, this movie doesn't have any heart to it. Oh, this movie sucks. This movie sucks. Why do we have to see Chris Hemsworth gorgeous six pack? Oh, why did Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo never get any screen time? Oh, this movie sucks. 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 Woof 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 oh woof 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 oh woof 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 oh oh god that pretty much sums it up I mean I I don't know I I had to sing this song because it's just it just totally destroyed everything what made the original film one of the greatest. And it just, oh, um, there was like several scenes that try to be like the original film, and it failed miserably. Like for instance, remember that scene with the um, the girl with the red Ferrari, you know, the one that was played by Christine Brinkley. Instead, they got uh, Hannah Davis in that particular scene, you know, already trying to, uh, yeah, the the. Trying to do exactly like they did in the original, where Clark Griswold actually spotted that girl, and she started making all these, uh, uh, always making all these flirting gestures and all that. But in this scene, however, she gets run over by a truck and explodes too. It's like the writers and the directors of this fucking movie try so hard. To capture the spirit, and they blew it. It was nice to see 
you know, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo again on screen, despite the fact that they're both being wasted in this mess. And it was also nice to see the Wagon and Queen family truckster again. Because that was a classic car that they used in the original. The one that they had to take a lot of vacation trips with it. Which I know they've been going through hell and back. Oh my god. Uh, the, the child actors are probably one of the worst actors I've ever met in my entire life. Skylar Gisanto and Steve Stebbins, remember those guys' names because they're beyond right up there as one of the worst child actors ever. And I can't stand them. You get uh, Kevin going around calling his brother a vagina. Saying he has a vagina. And, and, he, and he's like fouling and cursing all the time. Coming up with all these stupid jokes. It's never funny to see a younger kid actually cursing up the storm. Coming up with all these foul languages and everything. Never was, never will be. It's... I mean, this, this is a joke. I mean, calling your older son a vagina. And then all this other stupid shit too involving... Having to be covered in feces under a raw sewage dump. Instead of being hot springs as we know it. And having to go through a lot of hell and back by driving inside an Albanian car. A piece of shit car that is. I know it's a rental car but come on. That was a piece of shit. They're doing exactly like they did in the movie. The, the original film. It's just... What the fuck? But it could have been worse. Maybe they would have ripped off the girl in the red Ferrari scene where they started going skinny dippy in the pool and offered uh, Clark Griswold to join in. You know, yeah, and then we, we would have Rusty doing the same thing, yeah, before, yeah, with Hannah Davis. <sighs> Unbelievable. I'm glad that didn't happen because we already know she was killed. They, they also played some shitty music, too, in the movie. Although, I'm surprised they tend to mix in the Seal's uh, Kiss from the Rose, that, that song that's from the movie Batman Forever. I mean, jeez, is that your standard music? By throwing Seal Kiss from the Rose? They even had a cover version of Holiday Road. That's sung by some one of these stupid... Uh, Younger artists that I never even heard of, but they can't even sing for shit. I mean, th this movie is just such an insult. I feel sorry for Christina Applegate, who wants to participate in this mess. I mean, come on, she's Kelly Bundy for crying out loud. Why, why does this actress have to be around in, in shitty movies like this? She deserved better than that. And you also got Leslie Mann in this movie, too, already wasted. Uh, Chris Hemsworth isn't doing anything this special or fun, other than showing his six-pack and his underwear. I don't know. And, and you know what's sad about this? The score was actually done by Mark Mutterbodge. Who happens to be one of the singers of Devo. He composed this for this fucking horrible sequel. <sighs> that pretty much sums this movie up. It, it's, it's fucking nasty. Um, I didn't care about anybody in this movie. Not at all. I didn't even laugh once in this fucking movie. Not once. This film is just, without a doubt... One of the worst comedies I've ever seen. Already up there with Hot Tub Time Machine 2 and all the other films I've seen so far this year. I know. It's terrible. I'm sorry. I, I just didn't buy this whole fucking movie. I really don't. It's fucking... It's mean-spirited. Has no heart to it. It doesn't show any pride. It's just a lame movie. That's all it is. 
End of story. Stay away from this garbage. Stick to the original four movies. Yeah, stick to National Lampoon's Vacation, European Vacation, Christmas Vacation, and hell, even Vegas Vacation. So much better than this fucking movie. God. And yes, this movie's even worse than Christmas Vacation 2. That totally unnecessary sequel to Christmas Vacation. God, stay away from this mess. So anyway, I give this piece of shit. Sorry excuse for a vacation movie. Zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye!